All right, <clears throat> we're back for, I guess, part four for this 2020 GMC low-speed CAN bus SU. So what we're gonna do now, I'm sleeping on this one, trying to figure this out. You'd have to watch parts one, two, and three. We'll pull up the low-speed CAN network here. We got Evan today. Hopefully today we can figure it out, right, buddy? Or what module was causing this issue? So it sat in the shop all night. Uh, AC here, got an AC over there, so it's actually decently cool in here because it's like 100 degrees outside. No humidity, but my God, it's still hot. But what I want to do is part three. We pulled fuses from each of these. Nothing changed. We isolated joint connectors. Well, not the connectors themselves, between them with these other X connectors. I want to get right to these joint connectors. I'm going to look up these joint connectors. I want to get to these before I do anything so I can unplug these modules one at a time while it's acting up. That is how I need to get to it. And I'm going to have to pull the cluster out, the radio out. We'll just go per service that. We'll be very careful. And we'll get that apart so we can get to these joint connectors. I believe that's how we're going to find it. It's either that or pull these modules, but some of these modules are a pain in the butt to get to. So let's start with this one, J227. That joint connector is instrument panel harness. It's in the passenger compartment, which is inside the vehicle, not the passenger. They don't mean drivers versus passenger. They mean this is the passenger compartment left front which is up in here within instrument panel approximately three and a half inches from the breakout b10 bravo ambient light load sensor so we need if we find that load sensor help us here is the visualization can we talk Oh my god, J227. Scroll down once this thing catches up. Come on. J227 is index. What is this thing doing? Stupid computer. 13. So index 13, there's your. So here's the arrow coming this way. So this is passenger, this is driver, there's the steering wheel, pump, dash thing. Index 13 is right there. So we want to get to that. The other one is J202. Look, my computer needs a software update. My God. J202. I probably need to do a software update because it's so freaking slow right now. Let me go back. Don't you love it? Every time I try to do something, something needs to be updated or this or that. It's like a full-time job updating this and the scan tools. I had to update my Ultra this morning, my VCMI, right, buddy? I guess he doesn't talk. He just makes noises right now. He does talk to me. Shy. All right, so J202. Is body harness. Different harness. In the passenger compartment, front center forward of the instrument panel, approximately 9.4 inches from the breakout B107 accelerator pedal position center towards center of vehicle. Which is going to be behind that radio so passenger compartment body harness left front crew cab regular cab so crew cab what did I say it was I said it was 202 index 9 
index 9, so that's forward, that's the driver side, index 9 is right there. So there's your hood, or your engine bay. Yeah, right, there's the hump for the tranny, straight up from that. Well, that looks fun to get to. And then the last one, J479. Regular cab, crew cab. So crew cab under the vehicle, right rear corner. Under the vehicle, right rear corner inside the right side frame rail. Approximately 3.9 inches from breakout K101 trailer interface control module. K13 trailer brake control module towards the front of the vehicle. My God, that's a tongue twister. So, J479, go to this index or harness view. J479 is 25. It's the RPO code. Man, I gotta restart this computer. What did I say, 25? Yeah, I did. Good God, come on. Why is this stupid computer doing this crap? Oh, come on, come on, come on. Or is it the internet? It's probably the internet, more likely. Come on, clear up. Anyways, it was going to show you right. So this is the front of the vehicle. This is the back. 25 is right there. There's that crossbar. It's right up in there. So what we'll do is I'm going to get access. Now, I wish it was one. Well, there's another bar here, J491. J491 is rear bumper harness. At the rear of the vehicle, left of the center, between the breakout E7L, license plate lamp, left and right. Okay, whatever. So, 491. that index six that's the back so that's coming front index six right there before it goes into the license plate on the left side so let's get I'm thinking what I want to do I don't think going to this one's gonna help as much I think we just need to pick one of these probably pick this one or this one and because uh, that's ones with the most modules because this one left and right object sensor rear gate module sys module passenger Yeah, we want to get to this one and this one. So that's what we're gonna go Get that torn apart and go from there All right, so we we're trying to get to these joint connectors But if you look the joint connectors actually in this harness here Which is kind of a pain in the butt to get to because you got to open the harness up But not only that they're all those wires are soldered together. It's not like a splice pack on another GM where you take a connector out. We'd literally have to cut those wires and I don't want to do that or desolder them. So we're gonna to go to a next approach. All right, so I got a full system scan. We're all green and the bus activity looks perfect. Um, yeah, you can see it's good. But, I mean, it's a perfect square wave. And what's the difference? Like I said, it's sat all night. It's cold. So let's let it warm up while so we can get it to act up and keep troubleshooting. So Steve brings up a good point. Um, I rescanned it. We'll go over these two ones like we had yesterday, those two colds in each module, one in each module. But this data is, is perfect, like I just said. But if you remember from the other video, part three, and all those other videos, um, this is a perfect square wave, which it is, but there's never any, um, there's no bad spots at all. Like yesterday when it was starting to act up or part three, whatever the heck part we're on, we're on part four, but it was on part three, there would always be a couple bad spots in there until it got worse. There isn't. When you go to report, we had this yesterday too. 
you go in here, the parking assist module lost comma with the trailer interface control module, and the BCM lost comma with the interface control module, trailer interface control module. We always get those, even after we clear them right now, we rerun it, it yeah, it comes right back. BCM will come back, we'll, we'll do a fault scan again. It takes a little bit, but they always come back, even though our network is uh, good. All right, we're still good to those Colts came back again, and what it is is the uh, pat the park and assist module lost comm with the trailer interface control module, and the BCM lost comm with the trailer face con interface control module, which I believe is this guy trailer lighting control module, which is part of that bus, but our network is still good. So, yeah, right here, this is the trailer lighting control module that's on the low speed bus the BCM is on the low speed and this PACM parking assist module is on the low speed and they need to know that because it's you know lights and stuff right if you go over to service data right now we're scoped right there and it's on the you can scope anywhere in the network that's a that's a good place for the nail that's a good place for that Steve um, but we're talking to all these modules, except this one's not talking. It is not online right now. The K68 lighting trailer lighting control module is not talking. And we see that on the topology, and we see it, it's gray, and it's not talking to the BCM and the PACM. So if we go into this, it's just going to be a no com. Yeah, no com. So that, there's an issue. Now, is that the issue that we're having that's causing us? Because right now our network is still good. Obviously, we need to make it act up again. All right, so we're all driving it. Got the scope hooked up. Got Steve with. But anyways, like I said earlier, we've been driving it for, I don't know, what, 15, 20 minutes so far? And this, the waveform is good. There is no bad spots in there now however we have unplugged the trailer module the trailer lighting control module in the back it's under the spare tire we just unplugged that um just to make sure and we have nothing come back yet so and if you look like they said these two codes and those bcm in the lighting module or the parking assist control module there's no there's no comm to it. Well, it's also unplugged, but even when it's plugged in, there's, there's no comm. So I'm wondering if that module is obviously, it seems like that module's taking this network down or causing issues. And it's not right now because it's unplugged. We're going to go drive it back to town. We're going to look at this, hook it back up, and go from there. And I'll show you in the schematics what I'm looking at. But that's the only module in this vehicle that's on the outside of the truck for this low-speed CAN bus. Everything else is inside. Or scope down here we, you know we're just we don't want to you know only open up any circuits pony modules that we absolutely don't have to so we got all that dash and stuff put back together but we didn't really take too much apart this was pretty actually pretty simple to get apart um, but yeah so like you can see here and everything's working great but the parking assist module loss come with the trailer interface and the BCM lost comm with the interface. Now at the shop, I did plug it back in and I'd rescan it. And after like 15 20 minutes of island, all these other modules would start throwing some weird codes like lost comm with the instrument cluster. But that was when it was plugged back in and it's unplugged again now. So we'll do another scan here. We'll drive it back, make sure it's good, and then plug it back in and then go from there. Right, Steve? Yes. Yeah, say so yes. Good. Oh, nice. All right, so we've been driving, pulled over again. Um, it's been acting awesome. We're going to go ahead and plug it back in. Let's do one more fault scan real quick. Probably been driving for 20 minutes now. Running and driving for 20 minutes. Just on the highway. Do a fault scan and look at it one more time. All right, so it's still scanning. Just got the one cold there and the one cold there like we did before, which is expected. Yes, we're going to go ahead and plug it in now. All right, so that trailer light module 
is right there. This cement is hot. I'm gonna plug that in. Pause it for a sec. All right, it's plugged back in. Well, I just plugged it back in. We got no remote detected and it's doing it again. Look at that crap. It's doing it. So it's doing it right now. We're gonna do a full system scan. See it's doing a kind of vibration. Service the camera. It's got a bunch of hash in there. The AC is, well it ain't even blowing now. So we don't even need to drive again. It's doing it right there. Look at that crap in there. There's that hash. Look, no calm. So if I pause this, Come on. Good, bad. There is our noise. Right there, there's our pattern of noise. The phone's about to die. So, let's let it finish scanning. Service Park Assist System. Okay, let's finish it up. We're going to unplug and get it back home. And go from there. So, yeah, none of these modules are talking. Can you hold this, Steve? Put your hands are clean. Can you film this? He's, the battery's about to die. Just film that scope. I'm gonna unplug it again. And yell when it does it, if it gets better, okay? It's hard to see. Well, you can look with your other eye on the screen. I'm gonna unplug it. Is it gone? Look, I can't tell. It's a yes or no question. Yes, it's gone. So, put that back up here. Put the camera over here. Sorry about that. Steve gets a little nervous on camera. It's gone. We're gonna hit fault scan again. All right, so, yeah, all those, now we got calm again. We're gonna erase it, but our calm's back. So we're going to go back to the shop and do show that one more time on camera, possibly. But that is it. It's that damn trailer brake control module on the back. Right, Stevie boy? Yes, it is. All right, we made it back to the shop. We left it unplugged. No issues ever since. So what we're going to do now is Steve's down there. He's going to plug it back in when I tell him. you got to kind of latch it. I'll tell you when. Just don't break it. Okay, go ahead. You got to kind of line it up and roll it over. I'm going to go help him quick. Okay, go. All right, there's your bad. Is it plugged in? You can see it coming in now, right there. It's on. Yeah, it's acting up. Right there. Okay, pull it off. Pull it off. Yeah, it's definitely been. What? Pull it off. Yeah, it's bad there because it's plugged back in. Did you get it off? Is it off? It's off now. And look, it completely goes away. 100% is a bad trailer connector. All right, so that's the guy right there. That's the connector, and that's the module up there. I don't know if you can see it or not. My phone's about to die again. But we plug it in, it does it. And where's it at? It's right above this third tire, right above this exhaust. So that's probably why the exhaust gets hot. So it's left unplugged. That's what it is. So either I was like, well, I can go down there and check power on grounds and the serial bus data, but we, I don't think that's not the issue. We got a bad module. So we got to get a module and probably program it. Go from there. So I'm going to get a new lighting control module. It says that ECU does not require SPS programming or any setup procedure. I'll still probably use a 
still probably look at the vehicle if there's any other service updates it needs. But, uh, you know, so you just got to get a new one of those modules. I wanted to look at one other thing here. Come on. I wanted to see the schematic. Let's go back. All right, so that's our K68 trailer connect right unplugged. And if you look at the pin out, there's battery positive left rear stop turn, trailer right rear, trailer backup lamp, run crank, stop lamp, ground, trailer park, low speed GM land. That's what we're looking at. Secondary fuse battery. So pretty simple circuit, but that is the one. So we did one last scan here. The same two modules are not talking to the trailer control module because it's unplugged, like we said. Um, it's bad, but everything else is green. Everything's working. It's literally two nuts that hold this thing on. And this is the guy right here. Not much to it, but we need to get a new one of these. So everything else works. All right, so we need to get that new module. I did find a TSP in here about, find the TSP about turning trailer lights. Trailer running lights shut off due to excessive load on running lamp circuit. But it doesn't talk about a bad module. I mean, it kind of does, but not our U codes and stuff. But if it's a 2020, jump ahead to step 14 and install the new trailer lamp control module. That's where it's at. So when you hook up trailers, it says in here, if you hook up a trailer, um, it causes issues. But this guy's never hooked up a trailer to this truck, as far as he told us, anyways. Um, but it tells you in here, that's the connector we took off. I want you to rewire it, unless it's for, if it's a 2019 rewired, if it's the 2020, they want you to, uh, put a new module in, which we're going to need one anyways, because there's no calm. Maybe there was a trailer that hooked up and took it off. For 2020, no wiring change required, change of trailer glide control module, GM part number, buy him. So we're going to call the dealership. Try to find them. You can find them online too, 85 to 100 bucks, depending on where you look at. Some are on back order, so we got to see what we can find. But that is it for the 2020 GMC diesel truck.